your brain functions exactly like this tub of water. So everybody has a dopamine level. This is their baseline dopamine. You see this water level right here. And everybody has waves of dopamine. This is completely normal, it's healthy, and in fact, the waves in dopamine, that's what allows you to actually pursue goals in life and even be happy from the goals that you pursue. However, when you have a massive shock, like how porn or any other addiction can cause you, some of the water will splash out of this tub and actually decrease your dopamine baseline level. That's why addicts of all kinds are not only miserable and sad and depressed, but also they struggle with any kind of goal pursuit. You've literally depleted their happiness molecule. You've literally depleted the molecule which makes them actually do anything. That's why they're so unproductive. It's not that they're bad people. It's literally that their brain has been damaged by the addiction. Of course, I keep on saying they, but it's not they, it's us. It's you and me. We have addictions of our own. It's us who are struggling with these things. The information which I'm going to give you in this video will destroy any addiction which you have permanently and if it doesn't come back to this video and give me a dislike that's how sure i am that this video is going to change things for you when your mind has a desire your dopamine level is going to go up and here's the interesting thing as soon as it goes up it's actually going to go down below baseline so this is your baseline baseline of dopamine so when it goes down when you have a valley that's actually when you have an urge to move or perform an action. This is what most people don't know. It's actually the valley which causes pain and causes you to take action, literally causes movement. When you are in a dopamine valley, your body literally wants to move towards the goal that you're thinking of. So for example, say here, I think of ice cream. There's a place not too far from here called Freddy's. And they have really, really good soft serve ice cream. They serve it in a waffle cone with like chocolate and everything. And I like the vanilla bean flavor a lot. So even thinking of that, I have a little bit of saliva forming in my mouth. Even though I don't have any food near me, that's the power of our mind, right? I'm thinking of that ice cream that's caused a spike in my dopamine. And then that spike immediately reverses. And now I'm in a valley, a declined level of dopamine. This makes me want to go and acquire that ice cream. And if I did go get that ice cream, my dopamine would go again up to baseline and hit that peak. And then it would fall again back to baseline and I could continue my day. So this is me actually acquiring the ice cream. And so what happens with porn or any addiction is the same thing, you still have the thought of porn, which I'm just going to say P, your dopamine is going to go up and then fall down. You're going to be in pain. This is going to be your urge to actually go and watch porn. That's going to create you to actually take action, maybe pull out your phone, your laptop, whatever it is, and your dopamine is going to go high. But it's not going to be like this. Is when you, when you watch porn and you actually nut, that level of dopamine is going to be massively high. And when it crashes, it crashes all the way down and it doesn't return to baseline. It stays low. So you're still stuck in this goal seeking mode. So maybe you go and watch some point again, maybe you exceed baseline, but then you're going to plummet even lower. And this time when you come up, your baseline is even lower. And then you're still in pain. You're still in the goal seeking mode. And then you watch again, your dopamine sinks and your baseline is even lower. Now you're absolutely fucked because this is the kind of dynamic which messes your prefrontal cortex. Your brain is literally fried because of this mechanism right here. And I'm going to show you exactly the tools you need to defeat this mechanism and break the addiction forever. Now, of course, self-control is important, but let's put the blame where it actually lies. The porn industry and the media literally know how this system works and they have the audacity to sit and cry about mental health awareness week when they are the ones who created the problem in the first place. The media not only normalizes this filth, but also sexualizes every single damn thing. Think about it like this. 50 years ago, the media pushed cigarette smoking. A lot of young kids got into it, like 15, 14, 13 year old children got into it. Are you going to blame these kids for getting into smoking because they should have had more self-control? Are you going to put the blame? Are you going to put the corpse of these young people 
at the feet of the media and the smoking companies and the rotten scientists who propagated incorrect science saying that smoking was correct. These are the people who are to blame, not the people who are misled by the media. This is not about self-control. This is about using self-control to defeat the psychological operation that's being inflicted upon you. For example, you might have heard this claim that masturbation prevents prostate cancer. That's not true. It's completely BS. So I've actually gone and read those studies and it's very shoddy science. They use a bunch of surveys to come up with this silly concept that it reduces prostate cancer. I don't trust it at all. Imagine this. There's only one or two studies which even show this. They're not very good studies. And the media took these two studies and then blew it up to the point where almost everybody you ask, they think that masturbation is good for you because it prevents prostate cancer. And it doesn't even factor into the account nocturnal emissions. So a healthy human being, a healthy human man, if he doesn't have sex and ejaculates, he still has a means to relieve that pressure. The body will literally ejaculate excess semen at night when he's sleeping. That's completely healthy. That's not, that's not masturbation. But that's not even a single factor in these studies. And the media still had the audacity to go ahead and fill the mind of young men to think that porn and masturbation is actually good for them. Well, it's completely not. The government should have banned this filth a long time ago. Think about it. The government's always out to encroach upon your civil liberties. But no, but porn is a free speech issue. We need to ban porn before the advent of AI generated porn and virtual reality porn. These two, AI and VR porn, is going to destroy, it's going to destruct the minds of young men and young women if we are not careful about it. You see, free speech is for the furthering of political and scientific ideas which are not commonly accepted. Porn does not contribute anything to science or politics. I don't know why it's considered a free speech issue. And then, of course, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, even if you ban porn, it's not actually going to be eliminated from the internet. So what? Think about this. Fentanyl and other harmful drugs are banned. That doesn't mean that these drugs, fentanyl and other drugs, are not available, they have not eliminated them, but the ban still is effective in making it difficult to access these drugs. That's why we have these bans in place. We know the science is very clear that porn is very, very detrimental to the health of young men and women. And yet, for some reason, it's completely legal and even there's a whole industry making money off this filth. If you have any pro pornography thoughts in your head, I guarantee you it's been implanted into you through a psychological operation. You must defeat the PSYOP. And when you do, the bug-eyed mole men, the snivelly bureaucrats and the villainous media who think they run this place, they will fear you when you open your eyes. Imagine a future in which our children, our sons and daughter live in a world where porn is a thing of the past. And even whatever remnants of porn still exist on the internet, they can just ignore it because their mental health and spiritual health is so high that to them, it looks like absolute filth, which is exactly what it is. They will use science, observation, their own intuition and philosophy to find out what is true and what is false. This is the vision I have for the future and you shall see it pass. This is a multi-generational psychological war and you are their worst nightmare. Porn, drugs, alcohol addictions, cigarette addictions and even social media addictions attack the prefrontal cortex. This is the center of control in your brain. This is essentially the seat of stoicism in your brain. And that is what all these addictions directly attack. So think about this. Everything you lose against your addiction, your prefrontal cortex takes a hit and becomes weaker. Your dopamine levels and lower baseline, which makes you more susceptible to losing again. Literally, this stuff makes you a loser at a molecular level. Now that you understand the enemy, I'm going to give you the weapons to fight them. So listen closely. This is the part which is going to destroy your addictions permanently. So the example with the ice cream I gave you earlier was a little bit simplistic. I'm going to go into finer details because that's where you have leverage. and That's where you can break the addiction. So we're starting off again. We're just going about our day and we think of the ice cream. All right? We think about it. We don't actually acquire it. This is causing the spike in dopamine and like I said, it's going to give you a fall in dopamine. And now, of course, when you think of something and you get that urge to get something, you don't immediately have it. There's often a path of events which you need to follow in order to get it. For example, when I think of the ice cream and then I fall into this crash, the first thing I need to do is grab my car keys. So as soon as I grab my car keys, I have a little peak of dopamine. That's right. And then I have another valley of dopamine. So I'm actually deeper than I was before. And then I get into my car. That's another step towards the goal, right? So I have another peak in dopamine and another deeper valley of dopamine. Then I get to Freddy's, which is the place where I love getting their ice cream. 
when, once I get there and see their board, I see another increase in dopamine and another fall. And then I actually order the ice cream, get another peak, another fall. I actually get the ice cream, another peak, another fall. Each step of the way, I'm getting into more and more pain and see how far away I am from my dopamine baseline. That is how difficult the urge is to control, essentially. That's how less resistance you have, basically speaking. It's very, very difficult for me at this point to not eat the ice cream. It was easier back then when I just had the thought. So when I'm here and I finally get the ice cream and I take my first big lick, massive, massive spike in dopamine, go all the way past baseline. And then because I'm not addicted to ice cream, you know, I enjoy ice cream, but I don't like go crazy about ice cream. With time, I'll just come back, back to baseline, and I'll be back to normal. And that's the end of the story for ice cream. But it's different for porn. When it comes to porn, so I'm putting big P for porn. I get the desire to watch it, I have the spike, I have the decline, and what do I do? Maybe I pick up my laptop, I get that little spike of dopamine, and that sends me to a new valley. Maybe I open a browser, new peak, new valley. Maybe I type www. new peak, new valley. Maybe I type www.p, new peak, new valley. Maybe I finally go to the dreaded website and then I have another peak and another valley. And what happens here is the difference. When you watch porn and literally nut, that is the ultimate dopamine release because in prehistoric times, that was a good thing, you know? You want to impregnate a woman to further your literal children, further your literal ancestry, further your literal lineage. So of course you get a massive surge in dopamine far above anything which ice cream can give you, right? So instead of just stopping at the ice cream peak, you actually go way, way, way higher. And then when you crash, you crash really bad. And here's the difference between like actual real sex with a woman you love versus porn. If you have sex with an actual woman you love and you ejaculate, that's fine. You'll come back to baseline because that was a productive activity and your body knows it. With porn, you are obviously dissatisfied with what you got. That means when you come back, you're actually not at baseline, you're below baseline. And now you're in trouble because you're below baseline, your brain is still thinking, I still haven't acquired the goal. I still haven't had the result which I desired. So what do you do? You might actually have a new urge. That's right, this is where the problem starts. You have a new urge, a new valley. Now what happens? You're in the goal pursuit mode again, but this time it's worse because this time you're at a lower baseline than you were before. And now you're really fucked. Now, if you have the same cascade of events, you go down, 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 and then say you watch porn again, and you have a new peak, this peak is gonna be actually lower than the previous peak. And this time the valley is gonna be even deeper than the previous valley ever was. And then you're again lower than baseline, this time by a huge margin, and then this of course will continue, and you're fucked at this point, because you're gonna go down this hill, this is going to go worse and worse and worse. And every time it happens, it's going to be harder and harder for you to resist the temptation. Now your question should be, how do you fix it? How do you break the addiction? Well, I'm going to show you right now. So how do you get rid of your porn addiction or any addiction forever? This is how you do it. So let's understand addiction again. So first you have an urge, you get the dopamine spike, you fall below baseline, and then smaller peaks happen as you get closer and closer to the goal. And you have a massive peak when you hit the goal. And because it's an addiction, you never really come back to baseline and you repeat this cycle again and again until you basically ruin your life. Where is this cycle the most vulnerable? Think of that. Where is this cycle the most vulnerable? You don't really have any control about when you get the urge because you know your mind just throws an urge at you and it's not in your control. You actually have the most control in the first peak. This is where you strike. Because think about it, until this point, you don't really have any control. You cannot control what thought comes into your head. You can only control what you do about those thoughts. So until here, we have no control. But we do have our first line of control in the first valley. So what is the first valley? The first time you feel pain and you have an, an urge to move and perform an action towards your goal. That's when you attack. So when you have an urge to watch porn, 
and you have an urge to pick up your phone, that's when you strike. Or when you have an urge to go to your laptop, that's when you strike. You literally say with your mouth, you say the word no. You say it with courage, with boldness, like a military commander, you say no. You don't have to yell it, you don't have to whisper it, you just say no. And you short circuit it right in this spot when you have the first inkling of movement or action towards that goal, that's when you destroy it. You say no and you don't take another step towards that goal. Because if you take another step, what happens? You go back into the spiral and you're stuck in this spiral forever, right? You short circuit the entire mechanism by attacking it when you first get a sensation towards action. And what happens if you break it right here? What happens if when you have an urge to pick up your phone and go to the browser or pick up your laptop and go to the browser and you say no, what happens then? If you take nothing else from this video, get this. When you're in a valley, if you give it time, you'll come back to baseline pretty quick. In like five minutes, you'll come back to baseline. So when you get the first urge to get your phone out, and you say no, you literally have to say the word no aloud so that you can hear it because that signals to your brain. You hear the word no, you hear a command, you're giving yourself a command. You give the command no and you don't do anything. You literally stay sitting, you don't do anything. You literally say no and just stay put and don't do anything for five minutes. If you do that, your dopamine is going to raise up back to baseline and then you're just back to baseline. You're fine. If you're at baseline, you're good. There's no urge at baseline. And then you just continue at baseline until another thought comes into your head. Maybe, you know, like in five hours or something, another time your brain is like, hey, hey, maybe you want to watch porn. And then you get another peak and you get another valley. And again, at that point, when you're picking up your phone, you say no. And then you short circuit it again. You just return back to baseline. So you don't have this cascade effect. You just have a peak, a valley and come back to baseline. That's all that happens. So if you do this for long enough, you just go peak, valley, baseline, peak, valley, baseline. You destroy your addiction. You straight up destroy your addiction for the rest of your life because your brain has learned. Your brain has learned that this is not a reward worth seeking. And that's it. You're done. You will never be addicted to it another time in your life ever again. I've given you a semester's worth of knowledge with regards to dopamine circuitry. How do you absorb this information? So it's not the value I provide to you. It's not the value I provide. It's the value you absorb. You need to absorb the stuff which I gave you. Otherwise, there's no point. You aren't going to actually implement it. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go to the comments and literally do a homework assignment. The homework for today is think about the last time you relapsed or last time you lapsed on whatever addiction you have. And I want you to analyze the steps you took before your addiction got the better of you in the framework of this dopamine circuit which I showed you and analyze what was happening. So literally, I want you to write a paragraph saying step by step what was going in your, in your mind, what you physically performed and what was going on with regards to dopamine. And I will go ahead and grade you. I will come to the comment section and grade your homework. If you do this, I guarantee you, you've understood this concept well enough that the next time an urge hits you, you have the upper hand. You can attack where it is weak. And that is how you defeat addiction forever. If you do everything I told you and you still go back and watch porn, then I want you to come back and do this. Give me a dislike. Give me a dislike. And then in the comments, write down how you feel, like exactly autistic level detail, how you feel so that others may learn from your mistake. And understand this, the dopamine circuit is not a bad thing. The dopamine circuit is actually the best part of your brain. It's the, it's the center of motivation, the center of happiness. And this is what actually gives you massive success and happiness in life. This is the circuit which they literally hijack and ruin your life. The dopamine system is actually a learning system. So imagine this, you're back in caveman days and you're feeling hungry. You have a spike in dopamine and then you have a dip in dopamine. What do you do then? You go outside the comfort of your village and you see that there's deer dropping. So you see deer tracks. That gives you a small spike in dopamine. And then you have a deeper valley. Maybe you see the, the leaves rustling or the grass is moving. Another a spike because you think maybe the deer is there. And then you have another a deeper valley. And now you're getting anxious. You're getting pain. You want to hunt that deer, right? Then you pull out your bow. You're aiming at what you think is the deer. You have another peak because you're thinking you're going to succeed. And then you have another valley. And then you see it. You see the deer and you let the arrow go and the bolt gets it right in the neck. Success. That's a peak and a valley. Then you go and confirm that you got the deer and then you take it back to your village. Massive, massive success. Massive release of dopamine. All your brothers are, you know, patting you on the back. Great hunt. Great job. 
all the women in the village are like, oh, that's a good hunter. Maybe I need to date him. And then, of course, the village elders are like, okay, good, good, good job. Like, you're a young guy, but you succeeded in the hunt. Congratulations. And then what happens? You get the success. Your reputation has increased. Your, essentially, your wealth in the village has increased. And then because it's an adaptive experience, you'll return to baseline nice and slow. You'll come back to baseline and then maybe this time your baseline is actually a bit higher than it was before. So instead of the effect where you have a lower baseline than before, maybe this time you're actually higher. And the next time you do this, you're actually better. Maybe you don't have to go through every single step to get the deer. Next time you see the rustling and boom, you got the deer. That way you're actually increasing your baseline every time you hunt and get better and better at hunting. That's how you learn and perfect a skill. Your dopamine circuit actually helps you perfect skills. But nowadays what happens? Nowadays what happens is you get your phone, you see some dumb bitch twerking on TikTok, and you have an urge, you go to Pornhub, you freaking watch some porn, and then your dopamine drops, and then you do that again, your dopamine drops again and again until you're completely brain dead, your prefrontal cortex is fried, you're basically a lobotomized slave, you're basically a servitor. This is the mental prison which they've built for you. And think about it like this, if you were a prison warden and the inmates were getting a bit unrestful, you know, they're getting a little bit rowdy, right? What would you do? You cannot just use violence because if you and like the 10 other guards you have go out and try to fight the inmates, you'd lose because there's like 10,000 of them. What you might want to do instead is resort to chemical and psychological warfare. Fair. Maybe first you destroy the inmates' dopamine systems using psychology and maybe then you prescribe to them antidepressants and mess up their circuitry forever. And then maybe you make money selling them antidepressants, which don't fix the cause of the depression. They only mask the symptoms. There are quite a few tactics and weapons in the bag of chemical and psychological warfare. But you have some weapons too. Literally the sun is your ally. In my esoteric sleep guide, I, I briefly talk about how the sun boosts your dopamine levels. But now you have a pretty good understanding of the dopamine circuitry. So what the sun does is actually very, very remarkable. When you get out in the morning, this is especially effective in the morning. You wake up, obviously you brush your teeth, drink your electrolytes, go to the bathroom, and then what do you do? You step out into the sun, expose your eyes and skin towards the sun, not necessarily looking at the sun, just towards the sun. And this is going to recharge your dopamine. If you get good sleep, that's already a powerful dopamine recharge. But then you look at the sun and your dopamine level, your baseline dopamine level is at a whole new level and you're a different person than you were the previous day. And not only that, when you get out into the sun, that literally stimulates your pineal gland, which is the center of sexual energy for any man or woman for that matter. If you take nothing else from this video, understand how to break your addictions and then go out into the sun. That's all I have to ask you. That's literally all I have to ask you. Are there any supplements you can take to fix your dopamine system? Absolutely not. There are fools out there prescribing supplements to fix your dopamine systems. Don't do it because you don't want another dependency when you're trying to fix your dopamine. Instead, invest some time in exercise. Literally resistance training or cardiovascular exercise is going to up your baseline dopamine. I'm not talking about peaks and troughs. I'm talking about literally increase in your baseline. And the higher you can get your baseline, man, the more success you're going to have. Literally success in literally everything. Business, money, women, whatever you want. It comes from your baseline dopamine. And what's another way? Cold showers do actually work. They do generally increase dopamine for about six hours. It's not like a permanent increase in dopamine, but you know, six hours is not bad. Like you have six hours of extremely productive time after your cold shower in the morning. Just to drill this into your head, how do you break an addiction? You break the addiction as soon as you feel an urge to move and act towards that goal, which could be smoking a cigarette, could be drinking alcohol, could be watching porn, could be any number of things. As soon as you feel an urge to move and perform an action, you literally say no. You say the word no, nice and loud and firm and clear, and then you just sit down or you just continue doing something else. You literally do not entertain the slightest movement or slightest action towards that goal, and you will come back to baseline and do this three or four times, five or six times, seven or eight times, how many times it takes, and your addiction, literally your brain chemistry and rewiring is gonna change and you'll never be addicted to that substance again. Do you want to be a part of my conspiracy? Here's what I want you to do. Hit that share button, but don't necessarily share it with anybody. If you want to, that's fine. But what you do is you copy the link which you get from the share button. Just copy it because YouTube doesn't know whether you shared it with somebody or not. YouTube just thinks that you have shared this video. That, th that makes YouTube think that this is a banger video. And that means it's gonna shove this video into the faces of other men just like you. And I know that this video is going to destroy their po 
addiction as well. This is how I'm waging psychological warfare back on them and you can help me by doing this. And I will end with a visualization. Just close your eyes and hear these words. You are their worst nightmare. Imagine a legion of men resistant to psychological operations and completely maxed out on their testosterone. Such a force cannot be reasoned with cannot be bargained with or defeated. You are the vanguard. You are working on your dream project, but it's difficult. You don't know how to proceed. You're at a bit of a dead end. You have some kind of knowledge gap you don't know how to navigate, and you feel a sensation that you haven't felt in a while, a base desire for instant gratification. You've not watched porn in months and haven't thought about it in weeks. It wouldn't hurt, right? It wouldn't hurt to take a quick break, surely. In fact, it might make you even more productive, right? You feel a sensation to move your mouse cursor towards the browser tab. But before even a single millimeter of movement, a sound escapes your mouth almost involuntarily. A single syllable, crisp and clear, leaving no doubt as to its meaning. No. No, you do not yield, you do not break, you do not move. The dopamine death spiral that used to rule your life is weaker. It grows weaker every time you refuse to feed it. It is not dead yet and will try again to ensnare you, but your dreams are too important and you spit in its face. You are finished with such trivialities. You have a legacy to build. Discipline is 